What the heck is up, dudes? We're What's back. Up? It's just the two of us, me and Bose. We've joined you in an exciting time. Yeah. We are in the middle of March Madness. In all the madness. In all the madness. We we're actually recording this in the middle of round two madness right now. Tennessee and Texas are playing. And it's glorious. Anybody else still playing? Yeah, Illinois is still playing. We still got Crichton, Oregon at mm-hmm. fucking nine o'clock. Uh, don't like That's the only it. thing with March like Madness. That's the only thing with March mm-hmm. Madness that people really don't talk about a lot. Yeah. It sucks. I had to yeah. I had to watch state play eleven thirty in the morning, and then also you had to watch games at like nine o'clock at night. <laughs> yeah, it's just like they go into midnight. Now, I, do I enjoy watching basketball all day? For sure, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Because this March Madness has been very fun. Yeah, because I think you only have two Lions. dominant teams right now. As of right now, mm-hmm. I still think it's Purdue, Houston. Yeah, totally dominant. Houston's a machine. Yes, I think Arizona. I think Arizona and. Uh, UConn are obviously very talented, but yeah. like truly, truly just like powerhouse number ones is Purdue and Houston. That's yeah. that's who uh, uh, right now in one bracket I got Houston, in another bracket I got Tennessee, actually. Oh, I got Tennessee now. I like Tennessee. I do. I really do. Even though State put that hand on them in the SEC t- uh, tournament. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't. Uh... And then we got to feel the worst part about March Madness the loss. The worst part about March Madness is for. How many teams? 30, Thirty two teams. It just ends dramatic, like immediately. Yeah. And there is nothing more lame, guys. I'm gonna tell you all this right now, dogs, than watching your team go home at like one thirty in the afternoon. It ruins in your the day. first round. It ruins your day. Yeah, because you're so hyped. Yeah. Because we're both Mississippi State fans, and Mississippi State was in a very good bracket for their like their team. The was, most favorable. Yes. The most favorable t- teams that could have possibly been in their region were in their region. Yeah. And they floundered it. Michigan State took full advantage of Mississippi State having issues of getting started early. It was and, bad. And it was bad. It, it was too far. Even when Mississippi State started playing good basketball, it was already – too. the lead gone. was way too far yeah. gone. So – um, we'll see the Bulldogs next year. Yeah, yeah, I think. Don't worry, don't really worry. Do. And it wasn't an upset. I really do. Even though nine won, beat eight. Uh, I think Michigan State was the favorite. They were the favorite in that game. Yeah. So yeah, because I bet uh, I bet Mississippi State money line. Yeah. obviously it was a loss. Yeah. yeah. So hey, we'll get them next time. We'll get yeah. them next time. Was it an exciting season for Mississippi we'll State back. basketball? Yes, absolutely, absolutely. Yes. I haven't felt this excited for Mississippi State basketball since like 2010. Since Stansberry. Yep. Yeah. Shout out, Rick. Um, but dude. I think the biggest story in in this tournament, for me at mm-hmm. least, is Kentucky losing to Oakland. Dude, that guy, the white dude that I don't know what his name is, don't yep. really care to know what his name is, that dude putting 10 threes up. I mean, dude, that's what it's all about. Yeah. Like, that's what you go to college basketball to dream about is you being this random dude on a player, you know, as a player on a team and – you just make it rain in March. It's so cool. It was so awesome. Yeah, I, I was uh, I was kind of blown away by it. Honestly, just because of now how many seasons do we have of uh, Cal Perry losing in the first round since – I think since 2019, John Cal Perry has lost – has only won, I'm sorry. Yeah. Kentucky has only won since 2019, one SEC tournament game, mm-hmm. and one NCAA tournament game. What do you do with them? Yeah, what do you do with Cal Perry? Because the conversation has to be there. Because, yeah, has John Cal Perry grown Kentucky basketball way past what it ever should have been? Absolutely. Yes. They have a stadium that looks like an NBA court. It is insane. That's all because of him. But at the same time, but. You, you're, say, you're, you're saying that basketball is this important to this university that will pay this much money, boosters will put this much money into it. But the guy who made all that, the guy who's – it's, he's Cal Perry is the reason Kentucky basketball is the way it is today. Yeah. Has also underperformed in the postseason big dramatically, time. big time. Like, Getting upset, yeah. They're two years in a row now. Yeah, yeah. Like it's not even you know it's not like you're going against like a prime Duke team or anything no. like that. Like you lost to Oakland. Oakland and dude, no disrespect to Oakland. Yeah, right. Hear Earn me, the dub. Hear me, all you Oakland fans out there that are watching. <laughs> uh, it it's no disrespect, but dude. Kentucky should dog walk that team. Yes. 10 out of 10 games. It shouldn't be a competition. You could even see it during the game, too. 
Like their their front court was really like dogging that team the right. whole time. Uh, but they play a really weird kind of basketball where they just mm-hmm. like that. I mean, literally that that white dude has taken eight two point shots out of like three out of over three hundred attempts. He's taken two. No, I'm sorry. Eight, eight two point shots the whole year. That's crazy. Yeah, twenty threes in a game. It's, it's in a, a weird, postseason game. It's a weird game that they yep. play. But even then, like you've got superior athletes, you got superior recruits. Uh, should superior be spear facilities. Coaching. Yeah, I mean, should everything. be spear coaching. I mean, everything, dude. You yes. got like multi millions more in invest in that program than Oakland does. Yep. Again, no disrespect to Oakland. That's so awesome. That's why we love watching yep. March Madness. But they should never, ever, ever be Kentucky. Yep. And this seemingly happens like way too often. For, right. For Cal Perry, you're paying so much money to. Yeah. Uh, thank God that they avoided that lifetime contract. Like they gave like Bill Self, right? Kansas gave Bill right. Self. And a lifetime. you, we'll, we'll get to that Ooh. after that because I speaking of our upset, we'd have that would be yeah. the next one we got to talk about. Because, but I want to say like Kentucky is not a; they're not looking to make the tournament. That's given, right? That was given. It, it, Being in that year, first game was automatic, given. yeah. And like Kentucky, the expectation has to be, dude. I'm almost, I was, I was going to say Elite Eight. I, I think like, it's Elite Eight. Like I think the, it might be Final Four. Bare minimum is Elite Eight. I think it's I think. bare minimum. I like, think, yes. You have to get yep. there. And they're getting bounced first round. So, I'm not saying that this is the year you fire Cal Perry. Because I still think no. – When I listen to Cal Perry, do I, I've never, ever gotten the uh, feeling that he doesn't care anymore. No. Like, he's like – he, he's getting lazy. He's not It lazy. seems like he's a little bit more active than he has been. Yeah. You you see Cal Perry moving around he's a lot more. He's getting pissed off. That's yeah, he's is. talking more. Yeah. Um, because some years you watch Cal Perry when he's got his best teams. Yeah, he just kind of chills. He's yeah. just chilling. So um, I don't know. It was also so embarrassing for Cal Perry to be in his hometown. His high school basketball coach was there. Like his high school basketball team. Two of his best players were two of like Pittsburgh's best high school players of all time. This is like yeah. a returning home. You're going to dog walk this team out in front of like all of your fans and family. And then oh, you just get all the boys, dude. It's all you get crushing. So I will say, as a Mississippi State fan, what e- gets you, what helps you get over a tough loss in the NCAA tournament mm. is seeing, seeing that a <laughs> it was beautiful a conference opponent losing to a college that I didn't know existed. Yeah. until they were playing them in the first round. I had, I've, I've literally, I'm, I'm not joking a bit. I've yep. never heard of Oakland before in my life. I, but, I, I, but I, now I'm a fan. Oh, dude. Yeah, because I hate Kentucky. Yeah. And they just almost upset NC State. Yeah. Like right before mm-hmm. this podcast. Mm-hmm. They almost upset NC State, too. And I was like, and NC State, that's cow. a quality. That's a good 11. Or 11? Yeah, good 11 seed. seed. Great good 11, 11 seed. seed. Yeah. Yep. There's a lot of good 11 seeds this year. I Oregon. Mean, dude, that double cheeseburger they got at center, man. Burns. <laughs> <that's> <laughs> a, Burns Jr. Hey, is a dude, dog. He that's a again. dog, dude. Hey, Shout out to Burns out. Jr., 30, number 30, I think. Burns. There comes the double. Burns. High arcing shot. How about it? He got. Yeah, something like Shout that. Shout out to him, dude. Dude, he's good. But uh, he's nice. it's been a good tournament. I, but you've had some losses where, like, some big names in college basketball are definitely going to be on the hot seat. Yes. Bill Self, dude. Man. Lifetime. That's embarrassing. It was you bad. You a lifetime contract at Kansas. Yeah. Dude, the confidence you have to have to give a coach that. And then he gets dog walked in the yep. NCAA tournament by a Gonzaga team. It's not really that. No, good. that's that not good. that good. It's not that good. That you're way alarmingly better. Than yes, them. yes. And you could you give me the injury excuse. I don't yep. really care. I really don't like. There's oh well, we don't have McCullers, so I'm like, dude, you, you recruit yep. annually top fifty recruits every year. Yes, I don't want to hear the. I don't want to yep. hear the excuse. Your bench is at the same level. If not better yeah. than some teams in this tournament. Yes. They're starting five. Yes. Your benches. Like so you can't come to me with the excuse that we have oh, it's because we have some injury problems here at Kansas. Yeah. It's like no. well that's that's the point. That's why you have such good recruiting. It's just one guy. It's just one guy. Yeah. Yeah. Houston had two guys out one time this year. Yeah. And you, they have continued to perform top of the game. Exactly. And, and for self to like go into an interview and say that he's like playing oh, I was already thinking about next season. Well, I think for for the last month, I've been thinking about next season, to be honest. Uh, I'll put the quote in the video. That's like, so lame. That's insane. That's so lame. As a player, I would just be like, that's – Yeah, dude. Yeah, and, and in his interview, you also just made it like – it was that was one thing you said, and then another one was that, like, 
Oh, uh, we we play fatigue the second half. Yeah. Every basketball team plays fatigue in the second half. It's what the are you end talking of the season. about? It's the, end it's, of the it's the NCAA tournament. Yeah, you're you're playing the top level basketball. Yeah, you're fatigued in the second half. That's why your donors give you millions of dollars to recover yeah. at the end of the season with top notch yep. facilities, so your players can play better. If you want to go talk to a five, a, t- a starting five that's like actually exhausted at this point, yeah, go to start with Mississippi. Amen. Because that's a starting five that some guy this, this like last ten <laughs> games of the season did not leave the court. Yeah, sometimes they didn't leave the court. Did not leave the court. So, uh, you know, I, I just I, I'm not listening to excuses from the top top programs. I don't feel bad for them. No, I really no. don't. I never feel bad for a program that gets upset by mm-hmm. you know a low seed ever. Yep, they're low seed for a reason. Yeah, absolutely. They're yeah. It, absolutely the basket. I, I've I have out of all the sports seeding. Mm-hmm. Is true in basketball. Yes, the upset is undeniable when they happen. Yes, they, they, those guys, the 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 system they use in college basketball is the best out of any system that that, that mm-hmm. any of those sports use to put together playoffs, to put together seating. It is it's it's on the money. Yeah, it's it's pure. Yeah, because it, it takes it takes in consideration your whole season, mm-hmm. takes in consideration all your wins, all your losses, and puts you right where you should be. And they're saying that you should win this basketball game. Yes, and you lost by twenty one. Yeah, it's not like a buzzer beater. No. So, Kansas, well, you'll see Bill Self again next year. So, don't worry. Don't worry. For the rest of your lives. Don't worry. He'll be here life. next year. Good luck. <laughs> yeah, dude. Those day, signing, dude, any, anybody that does the, the lifetime contracts, I, I mean, that's insane. I, I don't get it. I really don't. Dude, imagine you sign that contract with, with a coach and you have a paterno situation, like yeah. at Louisville. Like, it just comes out that he was just – yeah. Heavy cheating going yeah. on. It's like, well, now you're, yeah, you're just gonna pay that. Now you got to pay out the contract yeah, you gotta, that you just. That you, and what? How do you pay out a lifetime contract? I don't know. Cause I don't know what's guaranteed and not I, guaranteed. I really don't. I have. No are you idea. just guaranteeing a salary every year? Or are you guaranteeing a lump sum by the end of the, all this? You have to pay yeah. X amount. So. And who says how long he lives? Yeah, that's that's what I don't understand about lifetime contract. Like you got, I mean, you know, unfortunately. We we have some early deaths. Yeah, Coach. Sometimes might, dude, you know, dudes lived to one hundred and five. Yeah. How, how do you? Who decides that? Yeah, I, I don't. Weird. I don't know. It's 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 going to be weird to see because, dude, that the second round loss for Kansas is, is it, just a, a a bit of a sign of maybe some bad futures yeah. coming for Kansas basketball. I don't know. I'm not saying that the, it's the end of the world for Kansas. I'm just saying for a guy that you signed a lifetime contract with, I definitely don't want to see us getting absolutely stomped in the second round Yeah, and then just Could like tucking me. tail and going home for it. Yeah. And why, why do you give a guy a lifetime contract? Like, dude, just pay him enough money a year yeah. to like where you don't have to worry about it. Yeah. He's like, not going. We're going to, there's no other. Like, there's not a program that he's looking at. It's like, oh, it's better than Kansas. Who's who's a bigger program than Kansas basketball? Right, right. Uh, there's not many out there. Spoiler yeah. alert. Like, I don't. I don't know who else is going to come in there and swoop up Bill mm-hmm. Self. Yeah. Well, good luck to him. Yeah. To the Jayhawks. Yeah. Um, let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's watch over to baseball. Mm. It's one big story. So oh, we've only had man. one series right now. The Soul Series just happened. Shout out to the Padres dude. for showing up and playing some baseball, dude. For the in enemy territory. For the people. There's a lot of Dodgers fans yeah. in South Korea, dude. A lot. A lot. And Padres came out swinging yeah. at like, by the way, dude, that was so weird the other morning when that was the Soul Series going on. I woke up at like, you know, 530 or whatever to get start getting ready for work. And I, I turned on ESPN to watch Sports Center when I got up. Nope. And it was just a live baseball game. I was like, oh, yeah, dude, they're in South Korea. Yeah. It's the first game of the year. That's crazy. Crazy. Um, well, I guess since we're talking about Soul Series, we, we should mention Yamamoto might have just actually had the worst debut a pitcher has ever had. Mm, it's bad. You have it's real bad. One inning pitch, five earned runs, four hits, one walk, two strikeouts. Okay. On a guy that they just gave a contract to, let me remind everybody, it's like three hundred twelve million dollars. Yeah, that, that's the a lot biggest of money. contract to a pitcher ever, and he laid a. Goose egg. One of the stinkiest turds on the mound I've ever seen. Dude, and we talked about it last podcast. If you hadn't watched it, go watch it. Mm-hmm. Uh, we talked about Yamato a lot and just the Dodgers in general. Like, everyone says, Do- oh, the Dodgers are loaded. They're yep. so good. And they, they center that conversation around Otani yep. Yamato. Uh, we don't. We don't know what that guy's going to look yeah. like. Yeah, Yamamoto is never uh, he is has uh, never pitched an inning in the MLB. Nope, ever. Nope. And Been a Japanese league guy. I know he was. I think he was two time their version of Cy Young. Yeah, yeah but yeah. still, 
know what that's going to translate to over here? No. You have no idea. So I, I hope it was just a fluke. I, I hope. I, I don't want to see anybody just flying that bad, but it is some. There is something poetic about yeah. the number, the the largest contract ever given to a pitcher, and him just going out and laying a turd yeah. on the field for yeah, everybody to watch. Awful. In a in a game where like the MLB is like we're going international. Yeah, like we're going to show what our product has. Here's our most expensive pitcher <laughs> who's ever signed a contract here, and he gets to one inning. <laughs> he gets waxed. He, gets, he has gets, a 45 ERA right now. He gets killed, dude, on the mound, like t- throwing the towel right. right. Balboa, you know what I'm saying? Like, and you know what's please. crazy about this? This whole situation for the Dodgers, that their ace mm-hmm. giving up five runs in the first inning of his debut yeah. isn't the biggest issue going on at the Dodgers. No. Dude, it Not even not. close. Now, Yamamoto, probably very excited that this is going on around yeah. him because no one's pointing Just at no him. no one's talking right about it. Because Shohei Otani might be a, like – like a like a dastardly man, like a like Dude. a like an evil person. Like for some reason now, there's like it, it feels like he's gone to the dark side. Like he might be a Sith Lord now. Dude, he's gone full Anakin. Guy, he came loves here, dude, putting in parlays. Loves it just too much, like me. I mean, dude. he's just like me. Otani showed up, chosen one. Yeah. Anakin Skywalker, dude, just seems fully. like the. Most, he's got everything that you want. Yeah, just he's the a, most can prestigious be your, man. One of your best pitchers is your best hitter. Yeah, wow. Holy crap. So good. But then, dude, Palpatine, 4.5. also known as <laughs> the interpreter, FanDuel, <laughs> <laughs> or, or mybookie.com, <laughs> speaks into his little ear and says, bookie, yeah. Otani, why don't you just like put in like five leg parlay right now, dude? Yeah. But instead of uh, $3, like most of us do, you're yeah. going to put in $8,000. It is crazy for a guy that makes that much money to have like an, a parlay addiction. Like, just do straight up bets, dude, bro. Just, you have enough yeah, money to do it. Straight bets. Parlays, bro. dude, if you are a wealthy individual doing parlays, you seek help. Yeah, because, seek dude, help. parlays, we, we do parlays. Because yeah. I I need money. Dude, it's like I'm I'm reaching. Like, I'm just like, this could be month, something. You know? This yeah. could be something, dude. Yeah. This, could, this could put me up like a couple months. I need to months. pay the water. This would be crazy. And, dude, I've had parlays I've hit where I was like, I'm like settled for two months now. That's crazy. <laughs> Thank God. That's crazy. Yeah. But Otani is evidently just throwing in parlays. Now, I'll, I'll throw some pictures up because I don't want to speak too much on it because mm-hmm. there is some evidence being tossed around right now online that he was possibly, maybe, possibly Otani was r- rigging games <sighs> or at least shaving points. One of the two. Yeah. One of the two. It, it do disastrous for his brand. Yep. And for the MLB. Because, you know, it was, we, we, all right, so when, we, when we're talking about sports betting and baseball, obviously we had to talk about Pete Rose. Yeah. The argument with Pete Rose was always that even if he was betting against himself, or it, it, how he, how much of a difference could he make in the game? Yeah. He has four at-bats. Yeah, four at-bats. That so, was it. But Otani, on the other hand, Dude. truly has a very big uh, role in this game, can really control what happens, yeah. and usually guys – I'll say on this evidence that says that he is betting against himself, whereas days he was pitching. Yeah. It was days he was pitching. And that's very easy to influence. Yes. You take yes. a couple miles an hour off, you groove it down the middle. Yep. I mean, dude. Yep. It's, you just leave, a couple, so leave a couple hanging. Yeah. It's so easy. Yep. So, now, what do I think is going to come out of this? We talked about this earlier. Nothing. No. This will be a MLB MLB – and investigators will chalk this up as a lost in translation, you know, too many moving parts. We really couldn't, you know, put our, our you know, put our thumb on who exactly was behind all this. Mm-hmm. We can't say that Otani was really the one putting in these bets. There was only some suspicious money transactions. Yeah. I imagine you will not hear about this story halfway through the season unless some evidence comes out that directly points at Show Otani. Yeah. There's no way that this will go anywhere. Yeah, I don't. I don't think so either. I mean, you can just look at it, just from a money and logical standpoint. Like Shohei is the guy yep. in the MLB, right? Yep. I mean, he taps in your Japanese market, and he's well loved in the American market yep. too. If that guy is corrupted and seriously like did do this, which again, all this is alleged, we don't right. know. Right? No, knows. Yes, we're not. Yeah. Yeah. Why wouldn't the MLB spend a few million dollars and cover all of it up? Yep. That's that's all I'm going to say. Yeah. I, I don't know if it's true or not. 
But I could definitely see Rob Manfred, who is my least favorite commissioner, who has always sport, been, who is yes. Whereas in the MLB's pocket, has always been on the top of Manfred's yeah. concerns. Yeah, he and could the, shell out a few million, yeah. pay a few guys off, and just be like, "Hey, let's make this go away." Show Hayes like equivalent right right now to the yes. MLB brand. Let's just make it all go away. And dude, if you're Otani. You throw your interpreter underneath the bus and just yep. let it be. Doesn't matter if it's my best friend. And and I hate it for him. Yeah. I I for the interpreter. Now if, I mean if Shohei really did this and he throws an interpreter under the bus. Yeah, because Ipe yeah. his interpreter, I think Ipe and Otani are like best friends. Yeah, it's tough. Yeah, it's that's pretty nuts. But uh and, and people that say that Otani didn't know, dude, you know when one of your bros is gonna throw in a right. play in. The, you, you just know. The suspicious thing around all of this is that before any story came out mm-hmm. about Otani and this and, and, and his interpreter. You had a ESPN interviewed Otani about this because yeah. ESPN received information about this before anybody else. And Otani said directly himself to an ESPN reporter, yeah. he was paying off Epay's uh, gambling debt. So he was aware. He and then was aware. The next day, mm-hmm. the story comes out that Epay mm-hmm. has stolen money from Otani and that the the Dodgers have fired him. Uh. See, ha- the, to me, that sounds like sketchy. the player was handling it, the yeah. team found out, and the team is now handling it. Yeah. 